I have a friend who played keyboard on our church team for a number of years, and his career has since taken him elsewhere. But while he was with us, I could always play this one um, chord on keyboard, and his reaction would always be, oh, like that's a sick chord. Uh, so I want to show you what this chord is and how you can fit it in your progressions. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is something called the flat sixth or lowered sixth chord today. And uh, I would consider this to be more of an intermediate or advanced tutorial because it's going to require that you kind of know how scales uh, are put together. You can build major scale, major chords on top of any uh, note, and uh, you know how to do some other things with chords to make them sound a little bit better. So anyway, uh, my name is Peter. Thanks for joining me at Our Worship Sound, where we're working to make worship keyboard technique and technology easier. So just to review a little bit, um, it's important to know what, scale, what chord you're playing in, or what key you're playing in, so you can know what scale you should uh, base your chords off of. This is a C major scale. You can build a chord off any one of these scale notes, just playing from other notes within the scale. And then we're going to give each chord a number based on the, the note that it's built on. So the, note, the chord that's built on the first note of the scale is the one chord, the two chord, and the three chord, and so on. And then each one of these um, chords has a certain quality. It's either major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, or major. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to play up to the sixth note of the scale. And instead of playing a normal minor six chord, we're going to take this sixth note, lower it half a step, and then we're going to build a major chord off of that lowered sixth. Okay, so within the key of C major, we play up to the A, we lower it to A flat, and we're going to play an A flat major chord. And um, this is going to be definitely a chord that's outside of the key. That's why it's so striking. Uh, but we're going to talk about a couple ways to work it in and make it sound good and make it fit into your, your chord progressions. So let me play it again. So we're, we're dealing with the four chord F going to the one chord C, the five chord G, up to a lowered sixth or flat sixth, A flat, and then back to the G, the five chord, and then finish with the one. Okay, so that's what it looks like in the key of C major. Let's talk about it in a couple of different keys. Uh, first of all, D major has a couple of sharps in it. We're gonna play up to the sixth note, B, lower it half a step to B flat, build a major chord off of that B flat, and then we're going to work in this flat or lowered sixth into our chord progression. Let's do the same numbers. So we're going to do our four chord. One, five, now our lowered sixth chord. So we would add a B flat major chord in the context of a D major chord progression. Now let's do it in one more key, about F major. The sixth note is D. We're going to lower it to D flat and play a major chord off that note. So we're gonna work in this D flat chord. So let's do our four chord, B flat, one chord, F, five chord, C, now D flat, our lower sixth. Okay, so we found it in those couple, couple of keys, and now let's talk about some ways that we can make it sound a little bit better. First of all, we're gonna go back to C major. When we do this, um, it's not as pleasing as it could be, and the reason why is something we call parallel motion. There's just these notes uh, that are just, uh, they're all moving in the same direction at the same rate. Um, so one thing we can do to kind of change that and soften that a little bit is instead of playing a normal five chord, we can change it to a five sus four chord. And let me play it down in this root position. So uh, we take this five chord G major, and instead of playing the B, we're gonna, which is the third note of the scale, we're gonna raise it to four, and we call this a sus four, so for a suspended four chord. Okay, and what that will do is allow us to keep this note in common between the lower sixth and the five chord. So we're gonna play our A flat chord here, and then keep that C and make it a G sus four chord. Okay, so let me play that in context. G sus four. So definitely do the five sus four chord instead of just the normal five chord. And then one thing I always do is I don't just stop at making it a major seven chord or major chord. I always make it a major seven chord. Okay. So take the note that's half step down from the root up top. And then um, this is going to make it sound uh, like it fits even better in the progression.
Okay. Now, the reason why that works uh, is because think about the note that we're adding. We're, so for an A flat major seven chord, we're gonna add the G. Think about where this is in the context of the key that we're playing in. We're playing in C major. That G is gonna be the fifth note of the scale. And if you watch some of my other videos, we've talked about how different notes are kind of uh, stable or unstable within a scale. And five is maybe the most uh, stable note or one of the most stable notes. And so you can add this note to almost any chord and it's gonna sound good. So that's why it makes it sound like it fits within the progression a little bit better, adding that in. Okay, one more thing I would do, and once you've done the five sus four, you've added the major seven, let's go ahead and thin this chord out a little bit because we don't need all of these notes happening. What we can do is just allow the root and fifth to be outlined in the left hand. We're gonna keep our major seven here. And then the only other note that we need to cover is the third, which is C, okay? So now we end up with this really kind of spread voicing of uh, an A flat major seven chord. You can hear each note clearly. And if you look at the right hand, the notes that we're playing are the first note of the scale and the fifth note of the scale. So ultra stable here. And that's why it just fits a lot better than doing. We can just do. And it just flows a lot better. So one more time, let me show you what I'm doing. Four chord, one chord, five sus four. Okay. All right, so uh, make those changes to make it fit within your chord progressions a little bit better. Now, when can you use this chord and how can you use it? First of all, don't go rogue. Um, don't you can't just decide as the keyboard player that you're gonna play uh, you're gonna throw in a flat six or lowered six anytime you choose and it's gonna work with whatever uh, everybody else is doing you need to be on the same page uh, with your bandmates and even if you're playing on your own make sure that it sounds right with any uh, vocal or any vocal melody that's happening okay um, so make sure you plan it out make sure you test it and uh, make sure it works with everything else now this tends to work well if you're gonna change it in the context of a song it tends to work well um, if the melody is hanging around that four, first note of the scale or the fifth note of the scale, okay, for the reasons that we've already talked about. Because if we, uh, when we're talking about these notes, we're talking about the third and the major seventh of this um, altered chord, okay? So let me give you an example. I'm gonna take the bridge from Oceans. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters. Going to change that third chord from A minor. I'm going to go down to the A flat major seven instead. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Okay, so the reason why it kind of works is because dun da da, it's the fifth note of the scale, the major seven chord for this flat six and it just kind of works. And I've never actually done that song in that way. Uh, and there are probably better examples, but that I think works. And I think we can take the creative license to do something like that. It did have to alter the melody just a little bit. So instead of playing or instead of singing, I sang. So I changed the E to the E flat and then landed on the C because it just fit within that. Um, a flat seven chord a little bit so just a small change and um that would be maybe be something uh, you'd want to use if you were singing a solo maybe not if you're trying to get um, the congregation to sing along with you um, but definitely a striking effect you want to be careful about how you use it um but it can work well um now where do you go if you're kind of building your own progressions uh or or changing a song where do you go once you've played the lowered sixth okay a couple of options and this will be the last thing that we cover here um, we've already talked about going down to the, the five sus four chord, okay, and that certainly works well. Another option is to walk it up, but not just to to stay within the scale, but to uh, alter another chord, okay. And this is going to be the same process that we've already taken. We're just going to do it with the seventh note of the scale, okay. So we've already taken the sixth and lowered it, formed a major chord. We're going to do the same thing with the seventh note of the scale. So if we're in C major, we're going to take this B, lower it to B flat build a major chord and then that enables us to just walk it up so like we do a five flat six 
flat seven, finish on the one. Okay. And uh, that tends to work pretty well. So uh, let me see if I can uh, kind of color that a little bit. So F, five sus four. Let's do our major seven for the A flat. And this is a B flat two chord because it has that, that first scale note in it and then it resolves nicely. Okay, so a couple of ways to fit it in. You can either take it down to the five uh, or you can walk it up to the flat seven and go from there. And there aren't any rules to that, but those are just a couple of options just so you have uh, something to start with. So there's certainly a lot going on there uh, with adding those chords in. But if you're looking to get beyond just the typical one, four, five, six chord progressions and add some flavor to your chord progressions or your songwriting, um, that's one that I, I, I go to quite a bit. So and I, I think it's a really cool chord and uh, uh, hopefully your friends like it as well. Um, if you want to learn how to use music theory uh, in a way that really helps you understand piano, not just knowing music theory for music theory's sake, but knowing what you need to know to draw from it and to really improve your, your keyboard playing as a result of it. I have something to help you out. And if you go to ourworshipsound.com slash music theory, uh, you can put in your name and your email address and I'll send you right away a, a music theory guidebook. It's just a PDF of a few pages um, with some just really to the point resources like a chord reference sheet, scale finder, um, and also just showing you what you need to know and how you can utilize it to um, learn things like how to transpose, how to play by ear, how to alter your chords, how to go beyond chords and play melodies, just what you need to understand from a music theory standpoint. Um, again, it's not anything that just like, you're gonna show off like how much you know, but you're gonna show off through your keyboard playing and just how it kind of frees you up to learn those skills on keyboard. So go to ourshipsound.com slash music theory and get started with that. And I hope that's helpful as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.